I really had to say, you know, what do I do? Well, I do pathology, but more importantly, I do innovation. How do we develop the technologies today that will help us guide the treatment for patients tomorrow? When you think about innovation, first have to say, what's the problem we're trying to solve? And for me today, the problem that I'm trying to solve is how do we better monitor patients for the presence or absence of cancer in their body, particularly before or after a treatment? Part of the reason that cancer kills people is that it's not detected until it's too late. So that by the time they go to their doctor, they already have cancer, not just a simple nodule in their lung, They've got multiple nodules in their lung. They've got nodules in their liver. They've got nodules, maybe even in their brain. Traditionally, we've always tested patients by getting a biopsy of their tumor, uh, which is very risky. It's time consuming. You have to go into the patient to get it. Carl thought, hmm, but what if we could detect cancer before you even knew that you had cancer? And we could do it by drawing a tube of blood. A very simple procedure, drawing blood, go down to your family doctor, send the blood in, and they go, yes, you have recurrent cancer, no, you don't. You could do this at least annually, no different than getting a cholesterol test or a sugar level, you know, just a simple assay to say whether or not you have recurrent disease. So if you have this information, this leading edge technology information around the DNA and what's going on with their disease, they can get the best therapies quicker, and that helps them with their survival and quality of life. But we are in trials with these processes. All the results look very encouraging. When we perfect the process of using blood to track the response and disease level in a patient, this will be game-changing and revolutionize how all patients on this planet are treated. What Carl is working on is huge. When you have an idea of something that you want to do, you have to plan it all out. Everything that you're planning, all the things that go into what Carl does, isn't free. <laughs> I mean, to do an experiment costs money. You need to have significant funding to be able to finish these sorts of studies. We need the, the donors, right? We need the people who are willing to support research and turn it into a, a clinical mission. And you know, we couldn't do these things uh, without the support of the Alliance Foundation, that's for sure. Alliance funding really set the stage for much of the early innovation that I was involved with at Roswell Park. More than a decade ago, we started the Center for Personalized Medicine, and it was a huge success, right? We expanded it to something that's now is offered in every uh, institution, every hospital in the United States. More people are surviving cancer. More people are alive today because of the efforts of Roswell Park. And so uh, raising money uh, to help Roswell Park on those next discoveries, the impact of the donor dollar is that uh, we could do things quicker. And that's super important because really everything we do at Roswell Park is about the patients and their families. I'd say in the next five years, you will see what we're doing here today spread across the United States. You know, the dollars that you all donate to research at Roswell Park are just so essential. And we are extremely grateful and thankful for all the people who contribute to the Ride for Roswell. We cannot finish or complete this innovation without your support and we thank you for that. People think there's no hope. Well, there may be hope. We have to consistently and constantly develop that so our patients have better treatments today, tomorrow, and the day after. We would not have the research we have today if it was not for the Ride for Roswell and the people that participate in this. And it's just so greatly appreciated, and I want to say thank you.